I'm absolutely delighted to be here. And I wonder if we could start with a brief, to the extent that I can see, show of hands. Hands up if you do use Slack today. So a reasonable proportion, I think. So a thank you. But for those of you that know us well, you might be pleased to hear that we're not actually, I'm not actually talking a great deal about Slack as a company or as a product today, but rather I'm seeking to frame the importance of organizational agility in the age of, a, uh, of the knowledge worker. And why is that important? Well, according to IDC, 40% of the Fortune 500 will be extinct in the next 10 years because they will have failed to build the innovation into their organization. They would have failed to build the resilience and the agility to move at the pace of changing market conditions. So, my plan for today. Um, seek to frame to the, the extent to which we're on a journey um, and, not, and, and work is changing and the importance of said organizational agility. I'll also then dwell on three themes that I think can help grease those tracks. And then I'll show you just a couple of customer examples that will help us get on our way. So, work is evolving, has been for some time, and will continue to be doing so for the foreseeable future. And I was pointed to an essay not long ago by a chap called Benedict Evans. Uh, Benedict Evans is an investor over in San Francisco, and he drew upon an analogy of a film called The Apartment. It was set in the 1960s, as you can see, and it had a character in it called Bud. And Bud worked at an insurance company on this floor, and it was rows and rows of desks, and all of those desks had an adding up machine. And when paper arrived with numbers on it, Bud would add them up, and they would move on to the next person. And if you think about it, those roles have already fundamentally changed, and I hope this isn't too provocative, this entire function has now essentially been replaced by an Excel spreadsheet. And then, of course, business applications are doing more and more and more. However, insurance companies still employ thousands and tens of thousands of people. So the individuals that are, doing, uh, that are working at these insurance companies today are therefore doing fundamentally different work. And hence, we're in the age of the knowledge worker. It's, it's non-routine. That repetitive nature of our work is, it, is being automated. It requires more human skills, and it requires such as empathy and those sorts of things. And it requires cross-functional collaboration um, to an extent that we haven't seen before. In addition to that, not only is the nature of our work changing, but it's becoming more and more complex. Um, Ben Horowitz, also an investor in San Francisco, coined the phrase that many of you may have heard, software is eating the world. And what did he mean by that? I think two things. First of all, he's referring to the fact that we all need to be concerned about a few university graduates with a cool idea, coding away, looking to fundamentally destroy whatever industry we're in. But secondly, I think he's referring to the proliferation of both consumer and business software to the extent that most large organizations, and I'm sure some of you represent large organizations, um, have over a 1,000 applications in, in, in the estate. And hence, in order to get work done today, we need to connect knowledge workers together in new ways, but we need to connect them to data and applications to enable us as humans to get our work done. And it's worth considering briefly uh, three market trends, or three trends that we're seeing. First of all, on the top left hand, on the left hand side, this is a chart showing the speed of adoption of new products that have been brought to market in the last 150 years. One of these lines, that black one, represents the refrigerator. And from launch to adoption by 80% of US households took 25 years. No surprise, the smartphone, eight years. But because of that very distribution platform that the smartphone has created, as we all know, getting faster and faster and faster. But the point here is, in order to compete, we need to be able to bring services and products to market faster than we have in the past. And hence, no longer do we have the luxury that R&D and marketing can work in silos. We need to be cross-functional and bringing those teams together. The second, well-documented, I will be brief, the Amazon effect we have broadly, fantastic experiences, and we are applying those expectations on both our business-to-consumer and business-to-business -business relationships. 
and hence we need to move faster on behalf of our customers today. And the third is internal, bottom right hand side, essentially not only do we need to connect people, data and apps together, there are more people involved in decision making. And that bottom right circle, those dots represent people. And in a team of just 10 people, there are 45 possible lines of communication. Hence, decision making is becoming more complex. So how do we react? Well, McKinsey say they're seeing a shift in organizations that were designed for efficiency. They were top down, command and control, to an organizational model that is designed to adapt based on cross-functional, agile, self-organizing teams. They're designed to look and behave more like organisms. They can sense change, they can react at speed, and not only can they execute really well, but they can reinvent themselves to take advantage of market conditions and pressures. So important is this, that according to McKinsey, organizational agility is the single biggest predictor of long-term company performance. And organizations that have gone through this digital transformation or agile transformation are massively overrepresented in the top quartile of companies. So I hope to some extent I've framed the fact that knowledge work is the new norm. And if we're going to remain competitive, we need to go through a significant agility change. So how do we do it? This is a short presentation. It's going to be reasonably brief. But we see three themes that are broadly, fundamentally easy to achieve. First of all, if we're going to create cross-functional, self-organizing teams, they need to have an identity. Secondly, organizations that are going through this transformation are rapidly coming to the conclusion that the communication paths of old aren't going to cut it in this new way of working. And finally, if we're going to enable these teams to have their identity, move at pace with the right, with the right communication paths, there needs to be company alignment, and they need to be aligned to a vision and a strategy. So from an identity perspective, one way of doing it is with the office environment itself. And one of our customers, excuse me, one of our customers, SAP, when they went through their digital transformation, they remodeled all of their campuses. But very importantly, they made everything in the office movable. The chairs, the tables, those plant pots, the dividers, the whiteboards, all of those sorts of things to help create a sense of team identity and team space. They also provided a modest budget to each team to accessorize their space to help bring that sense of team identity together. But it's not just the physical space. Teams are increasingly looking to build identity and have some control over their virtual space. We've seen massive consumerization of IT and software over recent years. Um, to the extent, as I mentioned, most large organizations have over 1,000 applications. And teams want to bring the tools that they believe are going to be successful to the way that they work. But as I mentioned earlier, we need to connect people, data, and applications to take away complexity. But according to MuleSoft, only 29% of the applications in our businesses have any integration to each other. And hence, if we are going to enable teams to build their own identity and move at pace, and to, and to bring the tools that they believe are going to make them successful to bear, we need to connect these into a collaboration hub to take the simplicity, to, to bring simplicity to work, to break down silos, and to drive uh, speed and alignment. So by doing this and bringing communication and collaboration into a, in, into a uh, collaboration hub, we connect people, data, and, applica uh, and applications into channels rather than email silos. And conversations are organized where these cross-functional agile teams can effectively work together. They can find the information that they want and connect to the applications to render them being successful. Hence, starting to take that complexity out of work. So, we've covered team identity a bit, not much. We've covered real-time collaboration a bit, not much. The third thing is we need to align these teams to an order organizational success. The blue line is a representation of a team. The circles are people within a team. They've got their own ID, they're cross-functional, they're self-organizing, we're good. 
However, what if hundreds or thousands of cross-functional teams aren't completely aligned and are pushing and pulling in slightly different directions? You would probably all agree that that would negate any benefit, probably more than any benefit, of said digital transformation or indeed agile transformation. And hence, for us, it's the bringing together of both agility and indeed corporate uh, alignment, a shared North Star, and providing that transparency that really creates uh, corporate velocity. And the one thing that I would leave you with, with this regard is, that corporate velocity doesn't need to be constrained by the barriers of your organization. So here, this green line is a, me is a metaphorical um, boundary of your business. And everything outside of that green line is maybe a, a candidate that you're looking to hire, or an agency, or a partner, or a customer. And the message in, in this regard is, we don't need any more to be constrained by the boundaries of our organization. We can bring these types of businesses and people into these new ways of working, so we can extend that corporate velocity outside of our boundaries. So, albeit briefly, we've covered the change in work, We've discussed very briefly how we might think about greasing the tracks of agility. Um, just one or two customer examples that I thought might prove uh, food for thought as we leave this conference and uh, move on later in the week. So the first is WeWork. I'm imagining most of you know WeWork. They provide shared office space. And I talked when we were talking about the refrigerator earlier about the speed of which we need to bring products and services to market. WeWork do this in spades. They are opening 12 new properties every single month, more than one every other working day. They've got five in Dublin already, they've got 47 in London already, and hence, if they're going to be able to move at this space, at this pace, they need to be able to ensure they have no silos and everybody is working in lockstep. So what they do is they create a Slack channel for each and every one of their properties, they bring all of the cross-functional teams into that, and then they create a Trello board um, uh, with all the tasks that are cross-functional to enable that office space to be launched. But to connect people, data, and apps together, they integrate that Trello board into Slack uh, so that when anything is changed, all the teams know about it, and they can move at the pace that we work, we work require. I don't know how well Ocado are known, I'm embarrassed to say, in, in, in Ireland. They're revolutionizing the way uh, that we shop. They've got 15,000 employees already. And as Clifford said, the fantastic thing is transparency. Everyone can see what's going on, and the status of things is that bit more possible. And they've taken silo destroying. They've, taken, they've worked hard to remove silos from their organization, uh, uh, so much so that they've built over 400 custom integrations to Slack that really enable them to connect people to the data that they need to be successful more effectively. Uh, and then finally, Capgemini, they have a division called the Applied Innovation Exchange. And for them, speed of onboarding and speed of product productivity of new employees is really, really important. So they built a Slack bot um, called Clio. I think it's named after the head of, 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 of that business unit. And uh, no, it's not. It's named after that person's child, I think. Um, and Clio, when, when one joins that organization, Clio asks a number of questions. And based on the answer to those questions, I can, um, um, uh, Cleobot will add that individual to the right Slack channel so that they can rapidly get up to speed and start to be successful. And it will also um, provision them with the software that they need to be successful. So to wrap up, we're in the age of the knowledge worker. It's more, it requires human skills such as empathy, problem solving, cross-functional collaboration. If we're going to be successful over the next decades, we need to bring organizational agility to bear. Um, and I'd like to think we can do that. I'd like to think we could do that together. And I will thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs>